All right. So if anybody needs to cry, like ugly cry, pretty cry, I don't care, go for it. Um, this next one is the one I wrote specifically for this event. It's brand new. Um, nobody's heard it yet except for a few friends. Um, but it's, it's about this week. It's about Sexual Assault Awareness Week. And I wrote it from the perspective of having already been abused. Um, it's kind of cool because I went to the clothesline thing yesterday and saw the shirts that people made. And a lot of the lines from the poem were on the shirts. So I was like, whoa, that's cool. Um, but it's so, it's so common that I think we get desensitized to it. You know, people are just like, oh, that's just, that's just what happens when you're this age. And it's not, it shouldn't be. Um, most of my like close friend group, or almost anybody I have met recently, all have an abuse story. And it's not from a stranger. Most of the time it's from someone they thought they could trust. It was from someone they were in a long-term relationship with, they were married to, a coach, um, and then parents even. Um, so I definitely wrote it yeah, from the perspective of having already been abused and being hurt by someone you thought that you were safe with. Because um, that's just, it's, it's double hurt. You know, The abuse is one thing and then the breaking of trust is another. Um, so this one is called Untouched. It happens so fast. When your screen flashes back to the scene of harassment, you never thought their fingerprints would leave such a scar. No chance to consent for an imprint on your heart in the shape of assault. You regret every move you made. You thought you could trust. Maybe being so nice was the thing you did so wrong. No. That's the shame. It wasn't your fault. Though some might say, well, why didn't you just make them stop? They don't understand the demand of the cement block, the weight that gets dropped on you as it ties itself around your mind. Responding in time isn't so easy when you're sinking, drowning in the depth of emotional shock. I mean, I guess you could try to be polite as you resist. Submit a request, a cease and desist. What is the line again? How is this supposed to go? No means no, no means no, no means no. But what happens when they're deaf to your cry? They don't care about your no. They don't care if you decline because it wasn't an offer. What do you do when they're stronger than you? And the glare in their eye is no misprint. It threatens the night. If you dare try to move, the punishment won't be light. So you look at the ground. Don't make a sound. It's here. In fear, you realize if you try to fight, you might not make it to see the sunrise. I remember on the school bus, lust reached from behind the seat and grabbed me where I didn't want to be touched. I remember at the pool, the water was a tool, a visual deterrent to blur the occurrence underneath the current, splashing in slow motion, crashing emotions, feeling like trash, hoping the chlorine was strong enough to burn my skin clean. I remember the day a thought crossed my mind without looking both ways. Was this just normal? It happened so often, even though it hurts, was this just the formal way to flirt? What a hellish lie that tried to twist and hide the truth. I know you're probably sick of spiritual platitudes. Band-aids with pictures of prayer hands taped to open wounds. And I get it sick of it too. But don't let your heart be punctured or deflated by culture or even church-related fraud. 
You really were created in the image of God. Rest in the truth that he makes all things new. Yes, even you. Rest. He knit you together. He will never condone abuse. Rest with repentance. The person you love that hurt you can be forgiven. I know it's tough because in our pain, we tend to resent them, but the gospel doesn't forget them. The same God that heals the bodies of victims can heal the hands that grip them. restore every war that was waged upon you love doesn't have to be distorted it shouldn't fight flight freeze fawn fondle or force you but fear fear is a violent fair-weathered friend endorsing silence when lament should rage like a mosh pit instead it enforces the cage draws a line in the sand and warns you not to cross it There is no abstinence, no form of protection that can prevent every portion of harassment. It's abuse and rape. It's a touchy subject, but thankfully, no attack will escape the gaze of God's justice. And there's peace in trusting this, that he washes away filthy plans with perfect security, recovering our purity with holy hands, rinsing off their fingerprints, erasing the imprints, removing stains like a surgeon, revealing a field of virgin snow. Healed and peaceful like the sea, still without a wave to show. Elegance reflecting a scene of the sapphire airbrush suspended above us, calm. 